American Feast Day to praise and thank God for all his blessings, even in these unusual times that we're living in. Um, I hope that you all have a worship service. I did not run as many off, so does anybody need a worship order to follow? Okay, you're all good. All right, I don't have any other announcements except for we can be thankful that it's toasty warm in the sanctuary today because they did come and fix the boiler on Monday. So let's praise and thanks God for all his wonderful good gifts that he gives us.
give them their food at the proper time. Follow my decrees and be careful to obey my laws, and you'll live safely in the land. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. His mercy is everlasting, and His faithfulness endures forever. He has blessed us in many ways, including So now as God's people, we say with thanks, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. You may be seated for our next camp. We're going to say, give thanks. Number 806, notice we say it two times. God says through Moses, 
the whole commandment that I command you today, you should be careful to do. They may live and multiply and go and possess the land which the Lord swore to your, give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brook of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's now sing our next hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving, number 789. Whatever is honorable, 
whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me do, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you revived your concern for me. You are indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned that whatever situation I am, to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and want. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that at the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that is increases to your credit. I receive full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you have sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And if I should not arise to the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is found in the 17th chapter of St. Luke, beginning at the 11th verse. On the way to Jerusalem, he, Jesus, was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, the saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Were the nine? But no one found return to give praise to God except this one. This is the word of the Lord. May we sit now for an exam greater than I say to us in the old time.
grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text of the day is found in Ephesians chapter 3, beginning the 14th verse. For St. Paul says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts in faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. They may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is our text. Dear blessed members of St. John, Happy Thanksgiving to you as we celebrate all the Lord's blessings upon us. I didn't get a chance to introduce myself. I'm Pastor Hoffman and retired, but glad to be here today as we celebrate especially Thanksgiving. But should we celebrate Thanksgiving? I have really heard some people say, you know, Thanksgiving, we've canceled everything else it seems like these days. We might as well cancel it too. Why be thankful? Now, I can understand a little bit how they're feeling, but the whole truth is, God is still with us, God is still blessing us, and there's still things we can be thankful for with God's hand upon us. This is not a thing to be canceled. It's really something we should spend time and sit it in terms of thanking the Lord. What bothers me more, by the way, why I get tired of this talk of Black Friday. You know, it almost seems like here, Thanksgiving, let's get it out of the way and on to Black Friday, talking about more things that we need. One thing the Bible should teach us, things that we need are always that important. So it's really good to give thanks. In fact, I want to introduce to you, look at the back page of our sheet. We have here the 12 Days of Thanksgiving. Notice how it's cleverly, this is from Elder Mel, by the way, that's why it's clever. But notice how it cleverly makes the word Thanksgiving. So I would encourage you, for the next 12 days, you start, you start, you know, giving thanks. So it doesn't just be one day, hmm, but it be all the time of giving thanks to the Lord. And really, it should be that way. As we give thanks for our blessings. The funny thing is, though, however, there's two ways of looking at blessing. This one says there's really two ways of doing this. And we'll consider that now, especially through Paul. Now, one way is what I dare call the worldly way. And what I mean by that is that it's one for one. You do one thing for me, I give you one thing. And that's how it is with blessing. We look for one thing, do it for me, and then I'll give you things like that. And that's how people often feel about it that way. You know, we'll try and do something here. You know, one blessing, and I'll look for that, and that's all that matters. And so, like, for example, I was talking to one lady. She's working on another project, Christmas card. Yes, that's coming up. And she showed me her book. And in that book, it had everyone's name. And if they didn't send her a card last year, she said, I'd give them one chance. But after that, off with their name. To get a card, you need to send a card. Well, that's what people say. Now, for example, too, in etiquette, they talk about that too. If someone invites you to a party, well, then you should reciprocate. I know it's a fancy word, but that's what they say. You should reciprocate, which means you have one for them as well. By the way, in Bible times, this was strong and pronounced. If you did something good for someone, you were expected to do something in return. That's the way it was, both in Romans and also for the Hebrews, whoever they were, that was pretty well ingrained. And 
know that's what people often do with God. Well, God, I've done something here. You can do something in return. And that's how a lot of people approach it in terms of blessing. They figure, well, you know, God, has, I've done this part. That's all that should matter. One person was a big practitioner of this was uh, Martin Luther. He talked about that throughout his life. How he really stuck to this for a while. And he figured, I'll do some good things, and then God will do something good for me in return. And he had it all figured out that way. And he just looked at us all that way too. We can also do that today with our gospel reading. Here is Jesus, and here are the ten lepers. They said, Lord, help us. That's their good thing. And so Jesus tells them to go show themselves to the priest. So, he did it. Isn't that nice? And that's how people often approach things. You know, I'll do one thing for the Lord, and he'll do one thing back. Incidentally, there's this word, you hear it thrown around these days called karma. It is not Christian, it's a false religion. Same idea. You do one good thing for me, I do one good thing for you. And that's how we expect it with God's blessing. However, that doesn't work. What does Paul say today? He says in verse 20, Now him was able to do far more abundantly than we ask or think, according to the power in his work within us, to him be glory in the church. God doesn't do one on one. By his great mercy, he gives us all kinds of gifts. He just, just showers us with gifts. And we don't deserve it. Definitely not. Our one puny thing doesn't really matter. Out of his special love for us, he blesses us. And that's why we should give thanks with no thought at all of anything in return. Because he makes us rich out of his special love and out of a special kind of love. In order to help all this kind of love, they said you should have a height, width, and depth of love. What is that? Three dimensional, that's what it is. Height, I, I can just move it. Height, depth, depth. It means three dimensional, all powerful love. That's the key to this. And with this in mind, he says, God gives you far more abundantly. And that's really what makes the difference. And that's what we can say really as God's people here. That's what Jesus said to that one Samaritan. He came back and gave thanks. At least he's one on one. The other guy is completely wiped out. But Jesus ignored that. He says, Rise and go. Your faith has paid you well. He has told him abundantly, faith makes a difference. Stay in there with me. Don't give up there. And you will be rewarded far more abundantly. And as we can say, as God's thankful people, even this year of the COVID, God has not given up on us, and He has given us far more abundantly. Well, let's consider some ways He's done it. First of all, of course, to the fifth thing He's given so well is, of course, materially. That God has given us all that we need materially in terms of food and shelter. And He has guided us and protected us. You know, it's just really special that way as we see how God protects us materially. In fact, I've read, I know it's true this year, one thing that's happened with the COVID virus is that people are taking up cooking more. They actually are. And they're discussing, discovering there. You know, this is pretty good stuff. I want to report to you that that's what my wife did too. She started looking at all these different recipes. We said, boy, isn't this wonderful? In fact, I want to announce today, we have taken up Brussels sprouts. I know. This was a jump for us, guys. But you know, I'll just give you right now. Brussels sprouts roasted on olive oil. I never thought I'd say that. But I said, wow, look at that. Thank you, Lord. I discover a little bit more how God gives far more abundantly than what we expect. And He really provides for us and protects us and just, you know, does all kinds of material things. One lady was telling me about this. She 
she said to herself that, you know, she wanted to celebrate Thanksgiving in a way. Her aunt called up and said, you know what? Someone's giving me a frozen turkey. Fifteen pounds. What am I going to do with that? She was kind of upset. She said, okay, I'll take it and I'll give it to someone. So she started thinking to herself, who am I going to give it to? And she came to an idea. She thought about this one halfway house. It's for ladies who have been alcoholics and been on drugs, but now they're starting to get better, and it's a halfway house that gives them a little acclimated again. And she first thought, no, 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 they're evil ladies. They don't deserve it. But then the Lord spoke to her and said, yes, they do. They really could use a little help. So that's what she did. She came over there, came to the place with this big turkey. And the lady just said, oh, thank you, thank you. We thought we were just going to have hot dogs for Thanksgiving. Thank you for this gift. And she said to herself, I really thought God corrected me. And I really felt a sense of warmth while it all worked out. Thank you, God. And that's the way God supplies material needs. So keep your eyes open there. The Lord might be leading you some way because he gives far more abundantly. Another thing God does, of course, in terms of giving us far more abundantly, is the forgiveness of sin. You know, all through Jesus Christ, who came for us, died on the cross and rose again, meaning our sins are forgiven. And he does it far more abundantly. What a special Lord we are. Now think about it this way. What if he was one for one? That is to say, you did one good thing, and that would raise one of your sins. Where would we be? Not too good. Who was the one who really felt this way? Martin Luther. He finished early life. He had some tough times. Because he thought about this. He thought this very much. One on one. How many good things I can do to make God happy and love me? I can. He just, and he, by the way, he would spend hours with the different priests confessing every possible sin. He would be himself because he knows one for one doesn't work. But then he read a passage like this, and where God says he blesses us far more abundantly. He forgives us by his grace all through Jesus Christ. And that really made a difference for him. That's how the church started, by the way. He was so joyful that he wasn't one-on-one -on -one anymore. But far more abundantly, it really made a difference for him. As we remember, being good Lutheran. And that's the truth. We can't earn our forgiveness. We don't want to do the one-on-one -on -one method. It doesn't work. What does work is we turn to the Lord, ask Him for forgiveness. And he is the one who truly strengthens us. He does it far more abundantly. Or take another example. How about prayer? The fact that we can pray to God and bring up everything that comes to mind. Now everything that's bothering us, we can pray for people, and we can do it far more abundantly. Now, okay, what if he did it one by one? That is to say, every one good thing you did, you can pray for one person. Huh, that would be very nice, but who would you do? Huh? That isn't very good at all. But that's what it could happen to the old way. But Paul says God does this far more abundantly. Because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we have forgiveness and we can bring up everything. Everybody. And so that's good as we'll do today. Keep praying for those people who serve in the hospital. And those first responders, they're really concerned about them. We're hearing more about them. They're really getting tired. And you can imagine why. Also, the fact that there might be a vaccine coming December 15th. You know, it's amazing you know, how the Lord works with those researchers. But that's another reason to give God thanks. We can just pray about all kinds of things. And I'll just give anybody who is sick. And that is that for a couple of pastors who are sick. Well, I'm definitely praying for them. But how special it is that we can make our prayers to the Lord and just ask God for help. I want to share a story that happened to me recently on the Lord provides. I heard about one lady, she's at Metro Hospital. She has a cold. And I thought to myself, boy, I'd like to get something out for her, like a little cold prayer, you know, and a couple more things like that. But unfortunately, the next day was a holiday. And I thought, oh, it's going to be a couple of days with mailing and all that stuff. She needs this now. And we're able to talk. But she really needs this now. 
prayed about them. Lord, I don't know what to do here. What can you say? Well, it was a nice day. So I went and talked to my neighbor across the street. And we talked a little bit. He said, well, Sean's visiting us today. Sean is from Metro Hospital. Metro Hospital? Really? Yeah, sure. Sean's going to work tonight. And, and, you know, if you have something, he can help you. I just looked up and said, thank you, God. Can you imagine that? What are the chances? Your next door neighbor right across there has Sean, who worked at Metro Hospital. And I showed it to him, oh, piece of cake. Even though she has COVID, I can get in there and we'll be sure to get it to work tonight. That's how the Lord works sometimes. I you know there's different ways to say thank you, Lord, for that. And it's just amazing how He can work. Prayer is really important. And it's far more abundantly than what we ever think about. All to the Lord. Don't go one on one with God. We don't have to do that. But in faith, as God forgives people, just remember too, we are forgiven in Him. And that He is the one who enables us to make our prayers to Him at all times. Finally, one other thing we can also say too, far more abundantly, the fact that someday He'll take us to be with Him in heaven. And again, how special that is. The fact that we know that Jesus went across, died for us there, and rose again. And that means that trust in the Lord Jesus, we can be sure we're going to heaven. I'll tell you, the people I've talked to, I do some visiting for St. Paul Wesley, by the way, and the people uh, keep saying to me, you know, with this COVID, I'm ready to go. And I always say, okay, it's the Lord's hands and everything like that. I have never heard that it was as this. And several told me, they just talked to me, I'm going to tell the kids to go scare them. But you know, they were just saying, I am really feeling that way. And I have a feeling a lot of people, especially older ones, are saying that too. Oh, what a messed up world we have now with COVID. I'm ready to go. Again, it is rest in the Lord's hands. Leave it up to Him. But still, they have hope. They have that certain hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. So we'll just have to see how things work out. They might change a little bit later with the vaccine. We'll see what happens. But we still have hope. And one thing that COVID has reminded us, especially, is that very fact. We don't have to give up completely. We have a certain hope to the Lord. And you know, when you think about it, aren't you glad that's not one-on-one? -on -one? That is to say, what would it be like if God would say, well, you did about a hundred good things. I'll let you in heaven for a hundred days. And then, <laughs> out you go. Wouldn't that be me? You know, that he said, well, according to my record here, here's what you did. And as soon as that's over, out you go. He doesn't. We don't want one-on-one. -on -one. What we have to say is, look at God by grace. His lovely grace that he gives us. That's all that really matters. And we'll be with him for eternity. And that's far more abundant than we can even imagine. Thanks be to God. We just say, Lord, for that, you know, thank you for that. And we have that hope even at this difficult time. In fact, I'd like to suggest, uh, especially on this Thanksgiving day, you might want to think about especially people and our family who passed on before us who really made a difference in our lives. Now, we have always taught you can't pray with them about getting to heaven or anything like that. But what you can do is give thanks at their memories. And especially today, say, thank you, Lord, these really special people who may, may be passed on but now are with you. Thank you, Lord, for them. They are so special. So I'm going to share one today. This is kind of interesting. My brother, his name is Chuck, he's in Seattle. He got bored, especially with COVID. They stay inside. So he went to, I'm not doing commercial, but he went to his Ancestry.com. He started looking at our family. Oh, I thought, this is pretty cool. Some of the things we find. The thing that I found that was really interesting because I heard a little about uh, is about my great grandfather, Anton Hoffman. Anton was a blacksmith in Chicago. And he did a lot of work there. In fact, I remember we had a stool. I think my brother started up. But it was made out of iron. That's the way it was. Well, 
Jack said, I found a sign of his place. And a Hoffman, blacksmith, they told me what street it was on in Chicago. Oh, Paul, isn't that interesting? Well, being a Chicagoan by heart, I decided to see where his building was. What was interesting to me, though, by the way, is figuring out the great grandpa, the fact that it was really close to the Jerusalem church in Jefferson Park. What's interesting to me is that that's where I was baptized. I was baptized uh, at Jefferson Park. And I keep thinking to myself, I'll bet you that's his great grandpa working out there. That's how it all worked out. Because one thing about great grandpa, I've heard this story before. He was Lutheran. Oh, yeah. He was Lutheran. He started dating the girl. And the next he said, Are you Lutheran or want to be Lutheran? They said, No. Forget it. Great grandma. And that's her. Love her. Guess it. Oh, yeah. That's the way great grandpa was. So I like to think a little bit the reason I'm losing today, which I'm terribly thankful for, great grandpa Anton, who decided to have his shop right here in the church so he could walk there. I'm not taking him out there, but I'm walking to church. And he really lived that way, folks. He really did. Now you might have some people like that too, the same way, who really made an impact on you. And we just say, thank you, Lord, for these people. Even though they are sated now, and we just remember them now in our hearts and prayers, we still say, thank you, Lord, for these really special people. And that's okay to do today, because God does far more abundantly than what we expect, even with our family, and especially with the hope of heaven. With the Lord's help, we can truly give him thanks. And so we see today, no, we don't want to go one-on-one -on -one with God. That's not the way to do. But rather in faith, we see that God graciously gives us far more abundantly in terms of material things and spiritual food. May the Lord bless us today that we truly say, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us now rise and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed.
We were heavy, but we had to grind not to care. The Lord said to the people who needed a special peace, he had patient Thor, and Jenny, and John, Janice, Janice, and Anne, and Joseph, and Tammy, too. The Lord was special and prayed for those who served in the military. We have Kenny, Kenneth Pruitt, Kyle Reagan, Captain, Captain Bullwinkle, Nancy Zeta, we have Carl Marsh, Clark Marsh, John Ruby, Seth Kumanak, Ron Raymond Wagner, and John Garrett. The Lord especially used all those who are serving in hospitals now with the COVID going on, giving their health and strength to make them well again. And it was the many people who are sick with this disease. It's very difficult, Lord, but just take care of them too. We give up police officers and also the, the firefighters, the EMT, law and important jobs in our country. And we give you thanks for our country that we have this freedom. Freedom of worship, freedom of speech. What a special country that has been created on your county hand. So especially be with the president, the president-elect, members of Congress. He was also our governor too, who's making many speeches in terms of COVID. And continue to bless also our mayor and everyone who's in authority. But remind us too that we need to serve not only in your church, but also in our community. And as we turn our thanks to you in that way too. So we ask your blessing upon us today, and we pray this in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and we do not have temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord will find you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for our last hymn. Now thank you our God, number 895.
Are technology troubles slowing you down? Get unlimited access to the highest rated tech specialists with our best selling IT support bundle, starting at just $14.95 per user per month. Our support bundle includes antivirus, monthly reports, and much more. Visit www.weldonpc.com remote for more details. You can also enroll online or by phone by calling 216-475-6000.